A domestic argument leaves a St. Helena Island man dead. A racial dispute is exposed by an email between two Beaufort Democratic groups. And we check in on college football as they officially kick off their practice this week. We've got that and much more. Keep watching, Beaufort. Your news starts now. Thanks for joining us for the Beaufort News. I'm Jessa Jeremiah, and here are your local headlines. A domestic dispute that occurred on Friday, August 3rd, leaves a 35-year-old St. Helena Island man dead. Desmond Holmes and his sister reportedly had an argument accompanied by a physical exchange that resulted in his sister allegedly stabbing him to death. The news released from the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office includes a report that the Beaufort County EMS took Holmes to Beaufort Memorial, where he was pronounced dead. Anyone with information on this incident is encouraged to contact Sergeant John Kelleher at 843-255-3419 or call Crime Stoppers at 1-888-CRIME-SC. A burglary took place at the Baptist Church of Beaufort on Saturday, which several items were stolen, including credit cards and a safe. The Beaufort County Police is seeking 31-year-old Joshua Reed for questioning at the, about the incident. Walmart cameras have captured surveillance of the credit cards being used, including photographs of the man, men involved. Anyone with information about the case or information as to the whereabouts of Reed should contact investiga Investigator Dowling at 843-322-7950. On July 31st, a deputy of the Beaufort County Sheriff's Office responded to a call from Hilton Head High over an incident of petty larceny. An email was reportedly stolen from the school's office that was written by the high school's former athletic director containing harsh disapproval of Beaufort County School District Superintendent Valerie Truesdale. Although numerous staff members and students had access to the office, the incident reports that the suspect is still unknown. A local small business owner is the victim of an online banking scam resulting in a large amount of money lost. WHHI's own Sandy Benson, the owner of Custom Audio Video in Bluffton, went to check her accounts with Atlantic Community Bank as usual on July 5th and realized that her two accounts had been depleted of funds. It was realized that international online hackers withdrew $20,000 from her business accounts. Atlantic Community Bank is reportedly not going to refund the money. Two separate Beaufort Democratic groups clash in regards to who holds the, ho the power here in Beaufort, and part of the argument, it appears, is fueled by race. The racial dispute was exposed when an email sent by a member of the Northern Beaufort County Democratic Club explaining the politics between them and a group called the Democratic Women of Beaufort. The email reveals that the Democratic Women of Beaufort are perceived as the white women's group, whereas the Northern Beaufort Democratic Club is perceived as a mostly African American group. Regardless of the actual racial structure of the two groups, it is clear that there is racial tension among them as the party coordinates for the upcoming presidential election. A search for a new director for the historic Beaufort Foundation will begin as Julie Good, the foundation's executive director, has resigned. Ms. Good has served as the foundation's director for almost two years and will be replaced by Maxine Lutz, who will serve as the interim director. The search for a permanent executive director will likely begin in September. Well, if you want to get your hands on any Main Street Beaufort dollars this time around, you'd better get in line early. Beaufort dollars go on sale on Saturday, August 18th at the Main Street Beaufort office at 10 a.m. and are redeemable at participating Main Street Beaufort locations between Saturday, August 18th and Thursday, September 13th. The dollars allow you to receive half price as you can purchase up to 100 Main Street dollars for the price of only $50. Get there early as the February Main Street Beaufort dollars sold out in only 18 minutes. And here's what's making news around the state. The US EPA and the South Carolina Department of Health continue their investigation on Tuesday of industrial contamination in a Columbia neighborhood. Government workers were sent to drill holes in the yards of residents in the neighborhood to verify that there is toxic pollution present. The holes were drilled deep into the soil to collect samples for lab analysis and to test levels of lead and arsenic. If the EPA finds contamination, they will need to dig up the contaminated soil and replace it. In the meantime, the DHEC is administering health screenings. Three people have been appointed to a board that will direct the state's pension and health care plans. Arthur Bontegard, Jr., 
Cynthia Hartley and Steve Matthews were appointed by Governor Nikki Haley to join Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott, former Budget and Control Board Executive Director Frank Fusco, and six others to sit on the 11-member Public Employee Benefits Authority. They will make policy decisions that, if approved, could affect how much money taxpayers and, and employees have to pay into the $25 billion tax retirement fund. College football is finally here as both the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Clemson Tigers have officially begun practicing this week. Both teams have landed in the NCAA's top 25 preseason ranking, which should make for a great season for these rivals. South Carolina ranking number nine with the highly experienced Steve Spurrier as head coach returning after taking the Gamecocks to their first ever 11-win season last year. Clemson ranking number 14, who returns record-setting quarterback Taj Boyd, 1,000-yard rusher Andre Ellington, and one of the nation's top receivers, Sammy Watkins. Clemson begins their season versus Auburn on September 1st, and South Carolina will play at Vanderbilt on August 30th. Kiowa Island's Ocean Course is the setting for the last major PGA Championship of the year, which takes place Thursday, August 9th through Sunday, August 12th. The course is thought of by many as one of golf's toughest tests as the players have to battle the elements of sea, sand, and wind, but the course also boasts not only a unique setting, but also that it is the longest course in major championship history. If you'd like additional information on these headlines, you can reference the media sources you see listed here. Also, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Just ahead, Buck Boone of the Island News tells us what's hot off the press when we return. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. We have Buck Boone with us now. Buck, we understand that the state recently released test scores for the Beaufort County School District. What were the results from these test scores? Well, first of all, welcome back, Jessa. Thank you so much, Buck. You're welcome. Uh, Beaufort County High School students improved their 2012 exit exam performance to all-time highs, while elementary and middle school students continued positive trends on statewide Palmetto Assessment of State Standards testing. Well, talk to us also about the Federal Accountability Report. How did our school district measure up? 70% of the district schools rated an A or B on the newly redesigned rating system released by the South Carolina Department of Education. The district as a whole received a B. The new system replaces the 2001 federal law's all or nothing accountability system uh, with one that rewards letter grades from A to F for performance. So encouraging scores for the most part, uh, with progress made in many areas, with the school district continuing to focus on improvement. Well, that's great. And I understand some students receive scholarships. Talk to us about these very hardworking students who were awarded these scholarships. Well, three Buford recipients received a total of $7,000 from the local McDonald's Scholarship Fund. Calvin Atkins, Danielle White, and Shaquan Barnwell are employees at the Ladies Island McDonald's. And owner Michael Eggers says that he is certainly proud to support and encourage his employees to earn a college degree. And I understand also that TCL is receiving a National Science Foundation grant. What does this program mean for the Technical College of the Lowcountry? Well, with an advanced technological education grant for $199,000, the school will begin to uh, be able to develop an agri-science biotechnology certificate program and begin offering courses in the rapidly advancing field of agri-science, which is a field of study that combines science and agriculture to enhance the production of plants, animals, and other related products. The agri-science industry is said to be one of the economic growth engines for the future, so this program will help teach and train a knowledgeable workforce in South Carolina. All these uh, school-related stories are a preview to our back-to-school section in the uh, Island News next week, so be sure to look for it. All right. Well, thanks, Buck, for our press report. That's some great information. Thanks, Jessica. We're joined by Blakely Williams with the Beaufort Regional Chamber. Hi, Blakely. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Well, hey, the city of Beaufort recently passed a stormwater fee for homeowners. Tell us how this will affect business. They did. For commercial and industry properties, there's a formula that determines the rate, and it'll depend on the impervious services uh, and the square footage associated with that. So the increased funds will be used for stormwater improvements and road maintenance. 
Okay, and how will the new revenues be used? The increased funds will be used for stormwater improvements and road maintenance, which will be great. Um, this, related to the city, they decided it was necessary. The state wasn't able to pay for these upgrades, so it'll make for a better uh, transportation system for all of us in northern Beaufort County. And Blakely, I understand there's a new business expo. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? There is. Our, this will be our fifth year producing the Business to Business Expo. It'll be held on Tuesday, September 18th. It's free and open to the public. We'd love for you to join us. It's open from noon to 5, and it'll reopen as our business after hours that night. Great. And is there any space still available? There is. I hope you'll call to reserve your booth today. It's a great opportunity to get lots of exposure to potential customers, and uh, it's certainly a great networking opportunity for your business. Okay, sounds like a great opportunity. Now give us a restaurant report. Are there any, any new restaurants over, open in Beaufort recently? Just this week we've got a brand new one on the roster. Fat Patty's just opened in Port Royal and it's excellent. The environment is so cool and urban. Owner Nick Borgini and his wife Michelle have done an excellent job. All right, yeah, we heard a little bit about that last week. Tell us how the food was. Oh, it's amazing. You have to go. Try it for yourself. I highly recommend the Frenchie. It's great with blue cheese. Okay, well thank you so much Blakely for your report. Coming up we'll report on your local newsmakers. Keep watching for more Beaufort news. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Mike Ingram from the Booster Club at the Beaufort High School. Welcome Mike. Good morning. Thank you, Jessa. Say, Mike, talk to us about Friends of the Program and what exactly this is. Friends of the Program came about last year as a part of the Beaufort uh, Big Green Booster Club at Beaufort High School. And the program was basically, intention was to bridge the community and the high school together, which we felt was missing a little bit, and the collective efforts of the community, our local businesses, faculty and students, we wanted to try to put this back together a little bit where the efforts together kind of put Eagle Field, our sports field, back in to one of the top facilities in the state. And by doing this, we feel there's an opportunity that we can create a sense of pride, some ownership, and tie back the community with the school. What a great program. And tell us how it got started. It got started pretty much out of um, jealousy, which led into some frustration. Um, there's a few of us about four years ago that travels to, to all the football games, and a lot of the common thread was coming back home late at night was, wow, why can't we have that? Why can't we do that? Boy, that was neat how they did that or what some of the facilities look like. And after about two years, we finally dawned on us after a Somerville game. I said, well, what we're talking about is a little sweat equity, a little bit of a uh, community effort, maybe use some of our resources within the community, get with some of our local businesses, and all come together to really make this facility something very special that the community and the school can be proud of. And what exactly is the purpose or the mission of the program? Well, simply for us from a booster point of view, we wanted to connect the community, the students, and the school back together. We thought that was one of the biggest things that's been missing lately, and this is just a small opportunity by having this program for this to happen, is because truly, we can all sit back and wonder what if, but we felt we needed to stand up and make a difference, and with the support of everybody that I've mentioned, we truly have a facility within two years' time that is something special that we all can be proud of. Well, that sounds like a fantastic program, Mike. We appreciate your report. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Now we have Linnell Fabian, who we are eager to hear from about a wonderful way to get some savings on some local spending. Welcome, Linnell. Hi, thanks for having me. So, Linnell, tell us a little bit more about the Main Street Beaufort Dollars. Well, Main Street Beaufort Dollars is basically our own form of currency that we've created that we can sell to the public for half price and they can go shop at participating downtown merchants and use the dollars at face value. Great. And how can we purchase these dollars? On August 18th at 10 a.m., they will go on sale at our office, which is at 101 West Street Extension, which is the walkway into the park from the clock on Bay Street. 
and we will sell them until they sell out. And last time we sold $15,000 in 18 minutes. So the key is to get in line early. Absolutely, that is impressive. Now talk to us about the significance to the downtown businesses. Well, August is typically a slow time of year here in Beaufort. Uh, it's People are in back to school mode, vacations are ending, it's a little too hot for some of our tourist friends and we really wanted to promote local spending and just give people a reason to come and, and shop with their local small businesses downtown. Absolutely. Keep it local, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we'll have to get our Main Street Beaufort dollars early to get those savings. Thank you so much, Linnell, for your report. Thank you. Well, if you want to know what events are coming up here in Beaufort that you just can't miss, stick around for your entertainment report, and we'll get to hear from Councilman Joe Lee, who's got your brand new Port Royal report when we return. Welcome back to the Beaufort News. We have Councilman Joe Lee here to give us our Port Royal report. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Jessa. Nice to be here. So I understand you've got some breaking news to talk about. Go ahead and let us know. Yes, Jesse, we sure do. Uh, first of all, an update on our port sale. The uh, State Ports Authority has granted the developers uh, extra time to complete the uh, purchase. Uh, the clock on this would expire September the 12th. Uh, at which time they will have uh, to be closed on the property. The second item of breaking news is in our police department. Several months ago, unexpectedly, we lost our police chief, Jim Cadian, uh, who passed away. Uh, we've had an interim police chief, uh, Captain Allen Beach. We're pleased to announce that uh, uh, Captain Beach is now officially Chief Beach, and we certainly welcome him and uh, we're proud to have him in Port Royal. Uh, Chief Beach is a graduate of um, uh, Leadership Buford, class of 12, 012, and he's also a member of the Rotary Club of the Low Country, so we're real pleased about that. Well, we're sorry for the loss, absolutely, but we are certainly excited to welcome the new chief. And also, why don't you tell us the latest in business news from Port Royal? Well, uh, last uh, week I mentioned that Fat Patties was about to open and as the sign says out front now, Fat Patties is finally open. It's on uh, Paris Island Gateway across from Bilo and it's receiving quite a rave uh, from those who have been there. So if you get a chance to go by Fat Patties, uh, you can't miss it. Absolutely. And in event news, we hear you have the performers for the concert series on Saturday. Yes, we do. And you can tell by the name that we want all of you to come and visit. Uh, it's the Gas House Gorillas, and the performance is at 6 p.m. Saturday evening on Paris Avenue. Should rain interfere, we'll move the event uh, to the shed. So there's an event, rain or shine, and we certainly do appreciate Artworks being the producers of this. This is uh, several years we've been doing this, and we've never had a bad show. So please come out, bring your cooler and your friends. All right, well, very informative, some exciting breaking news, and we appreciate your report. We'll talk to you next time, Joe. Can't wait, thanks a lot. Thank you. Now let's get to Mark Schaefer from Low Country Weekly. Mark, I know you're gonna tell us what we need to know about arts and entertainment in Beaufort this week. How are you? Doing fine, how are you? Great. So I know a new show just went up at the Beaufort Art Association Gallery on Bay Street. What can you tell us about it? Well, the featured artist is painter Carol Newsom, and she's an award-winning artist, and her work hangs in homes, galleries, and offices all over Beaufort. Great, and what a wonderful chance to check out a talented local artist. The next event on your list is Short Story America Festival, which isn't happening until next month. Is that right? That's right. Now, uh, it, it's not happening until next month, but we're telling everybody about it because we're really excited and we want people to make plans to attend. And this is going to be a really big event for local lit fans. Fantastic. What else can you tell us about this event? Well, we're going to have a bunch of writers, readers, teachers, publishers, all descending on Beaufort from all over the place. There will be readings, writing seminars, book signings, film screenings, parties. It all takes place downtown Beaufort. And you can pre-order your all-access pass for $35. It's available at shortstoryamerica.com. Jessica. Okay. Another great local talent for us to check out. And there's yet another big event happening in September. The Lieutenant Dan Band is making a third trip to Beaufort. That's right. They're calling it LDW3. 
this time. It's a little more than a month away, but you'll be hearing a lot more about this as we go along. Uh, you can clear your calendar right now for September 15th. That's when Gary Sinise and the band will rock the waterfront once again for the Independence Fund to benefit America's wounded warriors. Well, sounds like lots of fun, and this year there's another exciting event leading up to that concert, isn't there? There's a lot going on that week, uh, but what we're talking about is Wednesday, September 12th, is the silent auction and banquet. The special guests are fishing legends O'Neill Williams and uh, Flip Pallet, uh, also Iraq uh, War veteran Army Sergeant Major Jesse Acosta, and there's more going on with them. We'll tell you about that later on. This all happens at the Holiday Inn on Boundary Street, and tickets are $75 and $100. That's to sponsor a veteran it's for a very, very, very good cause, and uh, seating is limited, so you need to find out about that now. You can do that by going to LDW3.com. And also, one more event uh, coming up uh, on, the, on Saturday the 11th, the band that blew the water festival away at the Beaufort uh, Water Festival this year, The Design, they're playing the Wild Wing Cafe again in Bluffton. I know it's not a Beaufort story, but we kind of claim them after the Water uh, Festival uh, uh, show. It was so good. Uh, you can get more information at thedesignmusic.com. And as always, you can pick up a copy of Low Country Weekly or go online at lcweekly.com. And that is what's out and about. Jessa? All right, Mark. Well, as always, he's given us some great events to check out. Thank you so much for your report. Thanks. And thank you for watching. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. Please join us next time for your Beaufort News.